always seemed daunting. And yet our city parish government has always managed not only to address them, but overcome them and use these systems to build a stronger systemic infrastructure for the future. We've been in the midst of a unique challenge. COVID-19 has become a resident of our community. And this challenge has been an uphill battle for everyone. Yet our city parish government has responded in exemplary manner. We've stood up nationally recognized testing uh, facilities. We've galvanized our healthcare resources and professionals and worked to meet the needs of our residents throughout this and many other periods of uncertainty that we have been challenged with. Our Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness is activated and responded to four disasters in 2021, including winter weather, where we provided approximately 1,500 residents with congregate and non-congregate shelter accommodations, COVID community vaccination operations that administered over 11,000 vaccinations, excessive rainfall, and Hurricane Ida, which all displaced many of our residents for days at a time. And as we responded to these challenges and the realities that they brought with them, we not only adjusted but adapted to build stronger systems because the challenges we face are interconnected and complex. We have and will continue to use every tool at our disposal to address any challenges within our community, especially as we see this saga continue through the lens of the Omicron variant. We have and we will continue to address COVID prevention and crime prevention at the same time. We have and we will continue to allocate resources for testing while also expending money for drainage. We have to reimagine what normal looks like in Baton Rouge. For now, we work with COVID-19 as our backdrop. This is what it takes to ensure that our city parish moves forward. And at this moment, I'm even more resolute to see this shared vision for Baton Rouge come to pass. I know there are probably several critical areas that are at the forefront of your minds, and I want to address our progress, our plan, and our platform. Let's start with crime. If you ask any elected official, any faith leader, or any resident, probably any of you all in this room, what your biggest concern is, many would say crime and public safety. I don't have to go over the many press clippings or headlines concerning crime in our city. We all know about the influx of violent crime in 2021. And as your leader, I own that and face it head on every day. And especially late at night, when I take on those phone calls about a homicide that has occurred. Yes, that's right, every time there is a homicide, I get a call from dispatch. And many of the dispatch workers say, Mayor, I'm sorry to wake you up, or Mayor, I'm sorry to deliver you this bad news on Christmas Day. I thank them for their service, and oftentimes make a phone call to the chief to see how we're going to deal with this. And so I see and feel the grief of families, and I feel the worry of neighbors, like the neighbor in North Baton Rouge who called me and said, Mayor, she was almost hysterical. She was frustrated, and I get her frustration. She said to me, I'm retired now. I live in North Baton Rouge. And she said, I can't, I feel like I can't even sit out on my porch to enjoy my retirement now. And then she said to me, I want you to do the same thing for us that you're doing in Mid-City. I want to be able to walk down the street like white nights out and enjoy my community and enjoy my city and parish. And you know what I did? I listened attentively. And then I shared with her, I totally understand. Give me some addresses right now. 
and I called the chief so that we could get on it. I share that story with you because I want you to know that I feel the reality of everything that goes on in this city and in this parish. Now, just like I said, I own the state of crime in Baton Rouge. We must all own the facts about crime. Crime is soaring across the country. Cities of every size are grappling with crime like never before. And I don't present these facts to you as an excuse or a political scapegoat. It's a harsh reality that we must understand in order to grasp the complexity, complexities of crime and in order to create solutions. You see, this isn't about any one leader. This isn't about Sharon Weston Broom, one department, one officer. It is about the unity and urgency that defies and rises above past tensions and differences to fight for peace in our community. We're facing a crime epidemic a public health crisis that requires a whole government and community approach, just like COVID-19. Public safety requires a multi-dimensional approach that activates every part of our community to fight against crime. And we are doing it in a lot of different ways. Too many to tell you today because the time is uh, growing short, but I will share this with you, that we are giving $1.8 million to enhance Baton Rouge uh, Police Department's technical uh, capabilities, including automated license plate readers and technology for strategic community cameras. You heard a little bit about that on the video. Chief Paul has adopted an approach of collaboration and innovation. Uh, the, fire, the police department has implemented a place network investigation strategy, and the list goes on. We've given $400,000 uh, to our district attorney's office to address youth offenders, gun violence, and the victims associated. And our crime cannot be solved with one agency. We've got to prevent the spread, and that's why we've added the approach of empowering our residents to stand with us to say no more to the small percentage of repeat offenders of crime. And so we have our Baton Rouge community street team, Violence Interrupters. You saw that on the video. We launched that in 2021. And these teams are targeting neighborhoods that are plagued by violence with techniques and tactics that are proven to work long before the call to 911 happens and long after the police clear an unfortunate scene. You might have read in the paper today comments from our district attorney. We're collaborating with him to establish a homicide review commission that would operate as a public health model approach to studying homicides. So we're doing all this to help make our community safe, not just for the existing families and businesses, but to attract more people to Baton Rouge. And let's talk about economic development for a minute. I am so proud of the work that we're doing in the area of economic and workforce development. A new survey from the Baton Rouge Area Chamber collected data on national perceptions and amongst the data, there are two key findings that I found very interesting that I want to share with you all today. The first is that since 2016, Baton Rouge has made significant progress in having a favorable business climate and high quality of life. This is especially the case with those under 45 years old. The second finding being that business professionals under 45 are an important group for our city. They often have a more favorable view of Baton Rouge and are more likely to consider relocating than their peers. And so these findings show that they believe in Baton Rouge just as we do. And I believe we continue to strengthen our systems, our economy, and our community. Even more people will believe in the value value of our city and parish. And we are seeing this belief in our economy in real time. You saw the information about Amazon in our community. Exxon Mobil is going to infuse $200 million directly into our economy throughout their expansion 
process. And just a few weeks ago, Coca-Cola announced the expansion of their facility on Plank Road, which will support over 200 jobs with the potential to create new jobs while simultaneously injecting millions of dollars into our local and regional economy. Now, I'm going to pause there so you can give a round of applause for our economic development. So we see that these investments add to the strength of our growing economy, and they go hand in hand with the investments we're putting towards the redevelopment of our community. The redevelopment of our community and the quality of our infrastructure go hand in hand. You saw the work that we're doing with our infrastructure and drainage. You remember in 2017? You passed the historic movie BR program, and our city parish has gone straight to work. When you see orange cones out there, I don't want you to complain. <laughs> it's work. That's progress. We may have some closed lanes around our uh, parish, but that is progress in real time. We had 21 projects enter the construction phase in 2021, and we will keep this momentum as we move forward. We're preparing for $100 million in MOVE EBR construction spending for this year alone. Over 30% of the dollars spent have gone to businesses that would qualify as disadvantaged business enterprises. And for the first time in the history of our parish, we are putting our money where our mouth has been concerning equity in contracting. We also are doing work with our drainage. We currently have $740 million in drainage underway, including a number of major projects, such as the Comet River Diversion Project and work on five major tributaries. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention the historic stormwater master plan. We commissioned this initiative only months after I got in office. And this plan will analyze the effects of increased rainfall on the city's drainage systems and focus on future development. This comprehensive approach to drainage is the first of its kind in our parish and has evaluated over more than 60,000 drainage systems. The stormwater master plan is working. As you saw, we've already put a dent in the work. Since the approval of our first allocation where we used ARP dollars, we have cleaned 1,456 storm drains. I know how everybody loves data. <laughs> 87,829 linear feet of pipe and removed 4.9 million pounds of sediment and debris. And so we are putting our ARP dollars to work. In closing, with this in mind, I want to discuss the pivotal work we're doing to address quality of place. In the last few years, we've seen an influx of litter and trash in our community. Many of you in this room took up the call to figure out how we can address litter in the community, the community we live, work, and play in. You've organized litter pickup crews, and your city parish government has done the same. In 2021, we dedicated additional crews to addressing trash and debris. We increased street sweeping with a focus on high litter areas, implementing new schedules for mowing on the right-of-way, adjudicated lots and FEMA lots, and worked with our residents to coordinate community service litter crews. We recently brought in an experienced quality of place specialist who has worked with cities across the country to address similar issues. We know that our efforts are not enough to match the influx of litter in our city, but we are working to create a strategic and intensified approach to the challenge at hand. <clears throat> Let me just say this. Many of you may remember the play Man of La Mancha. Well, there's a scene when Don Quixote and his servant stand gazing at a dilapidated inn. When Quixote describes his vision of turrets and magnificent gates, 
His servant tries hard to see the same picture, but he can see, all he can see are the ruins before him. And when he attempts to describe them, Coyote says, stop. I will not allow your facts to interfere with my vision. <laughs> Friends, I entered this role as your mayor president with a vision for this city parish that we will be a community of peace, prosperity, and progress, a safe, hopeful, and healthy community for everybody. No matter what it looks like, seems like, feels like, I'm not gonna abandon that vision. If I allowed some of the emails or phone calls that I receive to deter me, I would have let that vision go a long time ago. <laughs> I would have just been in this seat doing a job. Yet, I understand this, and I believe you do as well, that the fulfillment of the vision is often a longer process than the vision itself. So I intend to see this vision to fruition. I intend to see this vision fulfilled. Just like Don Quixote, I need people who believe in what may seem like the impossible dream for Baton Rouge. People who share in the collective work and responsibility for what transpires in our community. People who are passionate about positive change and committed to serve as catalysts towards making a difference. People who believe in Baton Rouge no matter what. And I know that we can all be those people. I close with the words of Robert Kennedy who once said, it is not more bigness that should be our goal. We must attempt rather to bring people back to the warmth of community, to the worth of individual effort and responsibility, and of individuals working together as a community to better their lives and their children's future. Thank you and God bless. Y'all so kind. Y'all so kind. I'm told I have a few minutes for some questions. I don't feel compelled to ask any though. <laughs> I, I thought I covered everything. <laughs> yes, Marvin. <laughs> two, two quick topics that yes. I don't have time to really talk about, but St. George and this interstate plan that's going to go right down the middle of Baton Rouge that takes 23 years to build or something that I'm hearing. Any quick comments on either one of those two topics? Well, uh, the St. George litigation is still a work in progress, so that's real simple. Um, as it relates to the interstate, all I can tell you is that we are working closely with DOTD on any and every uh, transportation issue that is coming our way. And so we won't be caught blindsided on anything. But, uh, you know, people want to see roads. People want to see transportation improved, and sometimes there's a, a lot of temporary discomfort for that to take place. But um, we'll keep you posted and keep you updated on that. Yes, ma'am. On the issue of crime, it seems like we are having a lot of repeat, you know, bad crimes. And my question is, do we have a shortage of space in the parish prison, maybe? as to why some of these repeat offenders of bad crimes are being let out on bond when they really you know, shouldn't be? Well, let me just say this um, in all transparency. You know, there are different levels of government, different branches. And one branch of government is the judicial branch. Uh, we do not, the problem is not with the jail system. 
in terms of having a place. So I'm going to say that that question may be better posed to some of our judges because we don't make the decisions on who is released. They get the files on who are repeat offenders, what they have done. And so um, I believe that you know the judicial system has to work. I believe in everybody getting a fair trial, don't get me wrong. But if, if you see things or individuals that are continuing to come before you, you know, I'm not a judge, but maybe you should cons revisit that bond that you're given for that individual if they're a repeat offender. Have you all ever had some judges come and talk to you all? <laughs> that, that, that might be a good move. <laughs> yes, sir. Mayor, thanks for, uh, for coming in and briefing us. Um, I met you several years ago uh, as an ambassador for the Baton Rouge Area Chamber of Commerce, and you were doing a, uh, a ribbon cutting ceremony for a new business. And I've always appreciated the number of times you've come and visited new businesses, you were very pro business. I, I know with the pandemic, we've not been able to really have those gatherings. And I was wondering when you, if, if you had a gut feeling, when you might begin starting to have those ribbon cutting ceremonies. It, it does so much to encourage business and of making people aware of new businesses in, in their community. Yeah, let me just say, I have probably been to at least this year or in December, I'm getting everything is running together. And I, so they're saying, okay, I'm, I'm getting hand signals. How many have I been to? Probably at least 100. Yeah, over 2021, 20, you're saying. Yeah, but in the past months, people are still requesting those uh, ribbon cuttings, and I show up. So um, I think that, for example, one of the, the most unique ribbon cuttings we had recently that I'm still smiling about is when we were all out at Coca-Cola. And, uh, you know, we had everybody there from the governor to me to, you know, others. And this ribbon cutting was done with a, uh, a four wheeler or whatever you call those trucks that <laughs> went through the ribbon. So listen, uh, I think that speaks to, however, the fact that um, that certainly uh, we are still up and open for business and we're still seeing new businesses just like you saw uh, the company that is relocate is locating here now rural sourcing so we're doing good in that area we just need to keep it up and you give me a call and i'll show up for the ribbon cutting 